Hi, hello to everyone. My name is uh, Tim Campbell, and today I will talk uh, with you about uh, corruption and its effects on the lives of uh, young people. First of all, I would like to apologize, uh, apologize not to be able to be with you on, on the conference, but thank God to uh, technology, I'm still able to present you this uh, lecture about corruption uh, via uh, video. Okay, uh, I suggest that we start with our presentation. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to tell you something about what corruption is, uh, in what uh, forms uh, we can uh, see corruption, uh, and later we will uh, move forward to, uh, to the cost of the corruption, and also later uh, I will talk to you a little bit about the effects of, uh, of the corruption on the, on the lives of young people. So at the beginning, I would like to point out that there is no single comprehensive universal except the definition of, of corruption. Uh, yeah, maybe for start, I would like to, to share a, a a process that started in the United Nations uh, when the negotiations uh, on the Convention Against Corruption began in early 2002, uh, when one option under consideration was not to define corruption at all, but just to, to list specific types of acts of corruption. Uh, and uh, moreover, proposals to require countries to criminalize corruption mainly covered specific offenses uh, or groups of offenses that depended on what type of uh, conduct was involved, whether those uh, implicated were public officials, uh, whether cross-border conduct or foreign officials were involved, and uh, if the cases related to unlawful or improper enrichment. Many specific forms of corruption are clearly defined and understood and are the subject of the numerous legal or academic uh, definitions. Uh, Many are also criminal offenses, although in some cases governments consider that specific forms of corruption are better dealt with uh, regulatory or civil law uh, controls. Uh, for our presentation, we will use uh, definition by Transparency International, a global movement working in over 100 countries to end the injustice of, uh, of corruption. Uh, Transparency International is defining corruption as the abuse of entrusted power for private gain. Uh, corruption can take many forms and can include behaviors like public servants demanding or taking money uh, or favors in exchange for services, uh, politicians misusing public uh, money or granting public jobs uh, or contracts to their uh, sponsors, friends or families, and uh, in some cases, corporations bribing officials to get uh, lucrative deals. Uh, corruption can happen everywhere. But uh, we have to have in mind that uh, it can happen everywhere and anywhere and by anyone. So when we are talking about anywhere, uh, we are talking about uh, that it can happen in business, in government, at the courts, the media, and in civil society, as well as across all uh, sectors. Uh, from health and education to, to infrastructure and sport. Uh, now that we are, know that it, it can happen anywhere, we also have to be aware that corruption can involve anyone. Uh, so uh, it can involve politicians, uh, government officials, public servants, uh, business people, or members of the uh, public. Uh, corruption happens in the shadows, often with the help of uh, professional enablers such as bankers, lawyers, uh, accountants, and also real estate uh, agents, uh, opaque financial systems, and uh, anonymous shell companies that allow corruption schemes to, to flourish and the corrupt to, to launder and hide their illicit, uh, uh, illicit uh, wealth. Uh, corruption adapts to different contexts and changing, changing uh, circumstances. And it can involve in response to changing, changes in, in rules, legislation, and even uh, technology. Uh, if we move forward, I would like to, uh, to make a distinguish between uh, grant and petty corruption and also between active and passive uh, corruption. Uh, if we first talk uh, about uh, grant and petty corruption, uh, when we are talking about grant corruption, uh, we have we understand it as, as a corruption that pervades the highest 
levels of national government, leading to a broad erosion of uh, confidence in good governance, the rule of law and economic stability. And um, on the other side, petty corruption can involve the exchange of a very small amount of money, uh, the granting of uh, minor favors uh, by those uh, seeking uh, preferential treatment or the employment of friends and relatives uh, in minor positions. The most critical difference between grant and uh, petty corruption is that the former involves the distortion or corruption of the central functions of, uh, of government, while the, the later, so the, the, the petty corruption develops and exists within the context of established government, governance and social uh, frameworks. And if we move forward, active and passive uh, corruption uh, in discussions of uh, transactional offenses such as bribery, active bribery usually uh, refers to the uh, offering or paying to the bribe, while passive bribery refers to the receiving of the, of the bribe. In criminal law uh, terminology, uh, the terms may be used to distinguish uh, between a particular corrupt action and an attempted or incomplete offense. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's pretty clear what active and passive uh, corruption uh, in, in reality uh, means. So if we now move uh, forward uh, uh, on the, to, the, to the forms uh, of, of corruption, uh, I will start with the, with the bribery which is probably the best uh, knowing uh, form of, of, of uh, corruption. Bribery is the best owing of a benefit in order to unduly influence an action or, or decision. It can be initiated by a person who seeks uh, or solicits bribe or by a person who offers and then pays bribes. Uh, bribery, as I mentioned, is probably uh, the most common form of corruption, uh, no. The benefit in bribery can be virtually any inducement, money and valuables, company shares, uh, inside information, sexual or other favors, entertainment, employment, or indeed the mere promises uh, of uh, in in incentives. The benefit may be passed directly or indirectly to the, to the person uh, bribed or to a third party, such as a friend, relative, associate, uh, favorable charity, private business, political party, or also election uh, campaign. The conduct for which the, the bribe is, is paid can be active, the ex exertion of uh, administrative or political influence, or it can be passive, the, the overlooking of uh, some uh, offense or obligation. Uh, bribes can be paid individually on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis or in a part of a continuing relationship in which officials receive regular benefits in exchange for uh, regular favors. Uh, maybe just to, to see different uh, types of, uh, of bribery, uh, here we can see influence padding, uh, uh, bribery, uh, offering or receiving improper gifts uh, gratitude, favors, or uh, commissions, bribery to avoid uh, liability for, for tax or uh, other costs, uh, bribery in support of uh, fraud, bribery to avoid criminal uh, liability, uh, then bribery in support of unfair competition for benefits of, or uh, resources, uh, private sector uh, bribery, uh, bribery to obtain uh, confidential or inside, uh, inside information. Uh, and uh, this is uh, basically it. Yeah, as I, as I mentioned, uh, bribery is probably the most known or the most uh, also used uh, form of corruption that we uh, know, but it, it's not uh, the, the only one. If we move uh, forward, um, I would like to point out that, uh, uh, embezzlement, theft, and uh, fraud uh, in, in the context of corruption. Uh, they're all involved uh, the taking or uh, conversion of money, property, or valuable items by an individual who is not entitled to them, but uh, by virtue of this or her position or employment has access to, uh, to them. In the case of embezzlement and theft, the property is taken by someone uh, to whom it was uh, entrusted. 
fraud, however, uh, consists of, of the use of false uh, misleading information to, to include the, the owner of the property to relinquish it uh, voluntarily. Uh, for example, an official who takes and sells part of, uh, of a relief a donation or a shipment of food or medical supplies would be committing uh, theft or embezzlement. And on the other side, an official who induces an aid agency to oversupply aid by uh, misrepresenting the number of people in need of its uh, uh, committing, uh, it's a committing of, uh, of a fraud. Uh, as with bribery and other forms of corruption, many domestic and international legal definitions are uh, intended to form the basis of uh, criminal uh, offenses. Uh, next form of corruption is extortion. Uh, whereas bribery involves uh, the use of payment or other uh, positive uh, incentives, extortion relies on uh, caution, such as the, the use of or, or threat of violence or the exposure of demanding information to induce uh, cooperation. As with other forms of corruption, the victim uh, can be the public interest or individuals uh, adversely affected by a corrupt act or uh, decision. In extortion cases, however, a further victim is created, namely the person who is uh, coerced into cooperation, uh, while extortion can be committed by government officials or insiders, such as uh, officials can also be uh, victims of, of it. Uh, for example, an official can extort uh, corrupt payment in exchange for a favor or a person seeking a favor can extort it from the official by making uh, threats. Uh, next form is abuse of uh, discretion. In some cases, corruption can involve the, the abuse of, of a discretion vested in an individual for personal uh, gain. For example, an official responsible for, for government uh, contracting may ex exercise the discretion to, to purchase goods or, or services from a company in which he or she holds a personal interest or uh, propose real estate uh, developments that will increase the value of, uh, of personal property. Such abuse is often associated with uh, bureaucracies where there, uh, there is uh, broad individual discretion, few oversight or accountability structure, uh, or where decision-making rules are so complex that they neutralize the, the effectiveness of any accountability structures that do exist. Uh, next, uh, which is also the important part or uh, one of the main uh, main forms of, of corruption in, in most countries are favoritism, nepotism and uh, clientelism. Uh, generally, favoritism, nepotism and uh, clientelism involve abuses of uh, discretion. Such abuses, however, are governed not by self-interest of an official, but the interest of someone linked to him or her uh, through membership in the family, political parties, uh, tribe, religious or other uh, groups such as uh, uh, clubs or, or something like that. If an in individual bribes an official to, to hire him or her, uh, the official acts in self-interest. Uh, if a corrupt official hires a relative, he or she acts in exchange for the less tangible benefit of uh, advancing the, the interest of, of family or the specific relatives uh, involved. Uh, in this case, we are talking about uh, nepotism. Uh, the favoring of or discriminating against, uh, this is also uh, an important side of this, of this story, individuals can be based on a wide range of uh, group characteristics uh, such as race, religion, uh, ge geographical factors, political or other affiliation, and also as well uh, personal or organizational uh, relationships such as uh, friendships uh, friendships, and uh, our memberships of, of clubs or associations. Uh, uh, next one is uh, conduct uh, creating or exploiting uh, conflicting uh, interests uh, as noted in the United Nations uh, Manual on Anti-Corruption Policy. Most forms of corruption involve the creation or exploitation of some conflict between the professional responsibilities of a corrupt individual and his or her private uh, interests. Uh, the acceptance of a bribe creates such a conflicting uh, conflict of uh, interest. 
most cases of embezzlement, theft, fraud involve the individual uh, yielding to, to temptation and taking uh, undue advantage of a conflict of interest that already exists in, in both the public and private sector. Uh, employees and officials are routinely confronted with uh, circumstances uh, in which uh, their personal interests uh, conflict with those uh, of their responsibility to act in the in the best interest of the state or or the uh, or their employment. Uh, and last but not least, uh, here is here is also uh, in, improper political uh, contributions, uh, which is one of the most difficult challenges in in developing anti-corruption uh, measures. Uh, uh, to make this distinguish between legitimate contributions to political organizations uh, and payments made in an attempt to, to unduly influence uh, present or future activities uh, by a party or its members once they are in, in power. Uh, a donation made because the donor supports the, the party and the wishes to increase its chances that, uh, of being elected, it's not, uh, it's not corrupt may be an important part of the political system and political culture, and in some uh, countries is a basic right of expression or political activity protected also by the constitution. Uh, a donation made with the intention or ex expectation that the, the party will once in office favor the interest of the, of the donor over the interest of the public uh, uh, is, uh, it's, it's, it's bad. It's, it's corrupt to, to the payment of, a, and it's understood as a payment of a of a bribe. Uh, so let's move uh, forward uh, to the next uh, chapter that I present uh, uh, for you, uh, prepare for you. Uh, this is the cost of of the of corruption, uh, and here we have to be aware that uh, corruption erodes trust, uh, weakens democracy hampers economic development and further ac accelerate inequality, poverty, social division, and uh, the environmental uh, crisis. Corruption tends to, to concentrate wealth, not only increasing the gap between rich and poor, but providing the, the wealthy with uh, illicit means to, to protect their positions and uh, interests. That in turn can contribute to social conditions that foster other forms of, of crime, social and political instability, and even uh, terrorism. It is extremely difficult to measure the, the extent of harm that uh, corruption leads to. One reason is the so-called iceberg uh, phenomenon, meaning that only a small portion of corrupt transaction is visible while much more is, is hidden. After all, most corrupt exchanges that place in, in secret and very few cases are ever reported or otherwise recorded, much less uh, prosecuted and uh, punished. Another reason relates to, to the scope of uh, under, in, indirect uh, damage uh, caused by uh, dysfunctional public sector institutions and uh, this uh, distorted public uh, services. Consider the difficulties in, in measuring the following uh, dire consequence of corruption. Uh, here we have to list that corruption undermines uh, uh, development, uh, uh, corruption costs uh, lives, corruption harms the, the vulnerable and uh, perpetuates uh, inequality, uh, corruption undercuts uh, human rights, uh, uh, corruption damages the, the, the environment, corruption damages democracy, and corruption also fuels uh, crime and uh, conflict. Uh, maybe I will not go much deeper with, uh, with this uh, cost because I prepared a, a video uh, which I would like to, to share with you, uh, which will present some of the, of the costs of, of corruption and uh, help you to, to create an image why corruption is, is bad for for our society. So now I would like to, to share this uh, video with, uh, with you uh, so that you, you will see what are the actual direct and also indirect uh, costs of, uh, of uh, corruption. 
Does your country have a corruption problem? Well, yes, probably. Most countries in the world do. At least according to Transparency International, its Corruption's Perceptions Index scored 180 countries on a scale of 0 to 100, where 0 means a country is perceived to be highly corrupt, and 100 means it's seen as very clean. More than 120 or two-thirds of those countries scored less than 50, and the average score was 43. Definitely a failing grade to most people. But corruption isn't just a moral issue, it's an economic issue, and it's costing the global economy and you a lot. It's difficult to place an exact number on the global cost of corruption, but by most estimates, it's in the trillions. That's a lot. More than the entire GDP of most countries. Countries regarded as less corrupt, like New Zealand, Denmark, and Singapore, tend to have smaller populations. Most of the countries on the list have less than 10 million people. Size doesn't guarantee a lack of corruption. Some at the bottom of the list are small as well, but they tend to be war-torn countries like Somalia, South Sudan, and Syria. But most of the world's most populous countries are pretty far down the list. There's China coming in at 77, India at 81, and it gets worse for emerging but huge economies like Indonesia, Brazil, and Russia. Do you have a little money for tea? That's local slang for a bribe in countries like China, India, and Thailand, where tea money is deeply entrenched in society. Last year, a survey estimated that one in four people in Asia Pacific paid bribes to access public services like getting help from the police or getting an identity card. Police officers were the most likely to demand a bribe, and poorer and younger people were more likely to pay it. It may seem trivial, but not when you think about it on a bigger scale. The IMF estimates that the annual cost of bribery is between $1.5 and $2 trillion, about 2% of global GDP, and that's only one type of corruption. Other types of corruption include money laundering, embezzlement, and fraud. The Turkish have a saying, a fish rots from the head down, meaning that problems start from the top. And the Panama Papers have given us a glimpse into how much rot has gotten into the system. Encompassing 11.5 million secret files, the Panama Papers is one of the biggest document leaks in history, revealing just how much wealth has been hidden in offshore accounts and tax havens. To be clear, offshore accounts are legal, but the papers brought up fundamental questions about the ethics of tax havens. The papers revealed links to 140 politicians and public officials, of which 14 are current and former heads of state. As a result of the revelations, the prime ministers of Pakistan and Iceland were forced to resign. The world's second highest paid athlete, Lionel Messi, was named and charged for tax evasion, while a suspected billion dollar money laundering ring was linked to close associates of Russian President Vladimir Putin. The Panama Panama Papers wiped out $174 billion off the market capitalization of nearly 400 companies, making it the largest financial loss following a corporate scandal in history. And it's not just companies. Corruption can cost countries their economies. Brazil was once a high-flying emerging economy, but since 2014, it has been gripped by the car wash scandal. Originally a money laundering investigation, it became one of the largest corruption cases in history. At the core of it was state-owned oil firm Petrobras, which accounts for 10% of Brazil's economy. Its officials were allegedly accepting huge bribes in exchange for lucrative government contracts. The case led to prison sentences for top executives, billions of dollars in fines, and more than 100,000 people being laid off. Brazil plunged into recession. Its GDP contracted sharply, while unemployment rates hit record highs. Brazil's not the only case. Economists have found that corruption usually hurts a country's economic growth. Why? Corruption can result in fewer investors wanting to put their money in the country. One study found that a one-unit increase in corruption levels can reduce foreign direct investment 
per capita by about 11 percent. Corruption can also discourage people from paying taxes when they perceive that taxes are simply going into corrupt pockets. That means less money for the government, which in turn affects its ability to build infrastructure and public services crucial for economic growth. Even in Europe, corruption can inflate the cost of a public project by 13 percent. That means lower quality projects despite higher spending. Institutions like the IMF and World Bank have faced tough questions about their lending policies, with critics saying that money sometimes finds itself in the hands of corrupt officials. The World Bank has stepped up, establishing offices to investigate and sanction corruption. This year, it banned 78 firms and individuals from engaging in any new World Bank projects, bringing that number to about 1,000 in total. The IMF and World Bank have made fighting corruption a key priority. For instance, the IMF unveiled a new policy this year, promising to hold member countries to the same standards, making it a condition for IMF loans. It made good on its promise, only giving Ukraine $2 billion in aid after it put tougher reforms in place, like setting up an anti-corruption court. Many governments have also made strong anti-corruption pledges, although the motives behind corruption crackdowns in places like China and Saudi Arabia have been questioned. Polling shows trust in public institutions and governments is near historic lows, and a lot of that is rooted in corruption. But as citizens protest, multinational organizations demand accountability and officials investigate, team money may soon be left behind. Hello from Bali, I'm Sin An, and if you want to check... Okay, this is it. I hope it was uh, useful uh, for you to, to see this... Uh, cost of uh, of uh, corruption but before we move forward i would still like to to discuss some of the of the costs of corruption that were maybe not uh, explained uh, enough uh, enough to you uh, in this uh, video and it's important to, to be aware of them uh, because it, they they're having the biggest influence on the on the lives of of young uh, of young people uh, about which we will discuss in our last uh, last part of of, uh, of today's uh, lecture. But yeah, if we just mention some of them that are uh, important to to be aware of of uh, of, of it. So uh, the corruption undermines development. So when public officials uh, pillage state budgets or distort public spending toward investments that yield large uh, bribes like major public works less money is uh, less money is left uh, for essential services such as health or or education when politicians appoint unqualified family members and political uh, members of the party or, or associates uh, to run public uh, enterprise the firms underperform and as uh, international companies tend to avoid environments where demand for bribes uh, will increase uh, their operating costs the, the potential benefits uh, of foreign investments may be uh, lost next uh, consequences of corruption is uh, that it costs uh, lives without access to quality healthcare and clean water or when buildings collapse because developers have bribed uh, their way uh, out of uh, complying with safety standards, people, people's lives are at risk. So this is the direct and also indirect uh, uh, consequences of, uh, of, uh, of uh, corruption. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, corruption harms the vulnerable and uh, perpetuates uh, inequality. This is probably uh, known why. Uh, and corruption undercuts human rights. Courts violate the fundamental uh, right of access to, to justice when they only hear cases if parties bribe court, uh, court staff and judges, or when they rule unfairly to protect uh, the, the wealthy and the political connected. Uh, corrupt, corrupt corruption also damages uh, the environment and democracy. Daily experience of corruption reduces public trust in state institutions and citizens 
willingness to participate in democratic processes. Citizens who perceive politicians as corrupt may not bother uh, to vote in elections, engage in politics, or pay uh, taxes. Okay, uh, I think that now it's pretty clear uh, about the cause of, of corruption. That's why I would like to move uh, forward on the on the question how corruption affects uh, young people's uh, life. Here I'm showing you uh, four figures uh, which came out of the, the answers that uh, collected should the uh, UN's uh, My World 2014 uh, survey, uh, which identified transparency and corruption as a top priority for people under the age of uh, 34. When participants uh, were asked to describe the, the impact of corruption, the vast majority of those surveyed believed corruption is holding their country back and uh, depriving uh, their generation, generations of uh, opportunity. Uh, the next graph is, is showing that the judicial system and law enforcement are ranked uh, the top two sectors of concern among, among uh, young correspondents. Uh, highlighting a trust deficit in governance and public institutions. Uh, corruption most affects young people as a result of uh, their involvement in almost every aspect of, uh, of society. As students, activists, uh, citizens, uh, workers, uh, uh, customers, and also uh, voters. Young people are affected by corruption in, in two ways. Uh, first, in contrast to, to other groups by, by their number, diverse roles and numerous uh, dealings with state and, and society, young people tend to be more exposed uh, to, to bribery. According to, to, to Transparency International's uh, Global Corruption uh, Barometer, uh, the, the data is from 2009, uh, uh, measures petty corruption young people uh, reported young people under 30 years, uh, reported paying bribes the most frequently among all the age groups uh, surveyed. Across the 69 countries in, in the sample, 60% of all people under 30 had paid a bribe in the last, in the last uh, year. In their interactions with government and businesses, young people are often put uh, on, on, the front, on the front line of corruption. They may be forced to bribe to go to school, pass an exam, or get a job. For example, petty corruption can become a prerequisite for getting a first job uh, or the only means for young people to, to beat out uh, ever tighter competition for fewer uh, openings. And on the, on the other side, uh, other way how the, the, the young people's lives are, are affected by, by the corruption is uh, uh, lack of quality public services, corruption diverts funds uh, intended for development, uh, undermining government's ability to provide basic services, uh, feeding inequality and injustice, and discouraging uh, aid and uh, investment. Uh, this really deprives young uh, generations of uh, potential to develop as individuals and to contribute to society as uh, citizens. Uh, here, I am showing you also uh, banner uh, of a campaign of the Trans Trans uh, Transparency International, uh, the duty of, of youth is to challenge uh, corruption. Uh, the youth movement is at the forefront of challenging this status quo. Uh, youth have always been a force of change with, within countries, whether by daring to ask pointed questions, pushing civilian movements, uh, of uh, resistance or uh, promoting social issues. Their energy, strength, uh, intentiveness, and uh, hopefulness have led to the transformation of societies within a generation. Young people are calling for ambitious agendas and innovative ways to shape them uh, on a whole array of areas ranging from education, healthcare, and labor conditions uh, through to the environment, trade, relations, and uh, global governments. All these fields are also closely connected with the uh, with the corruption, uh, which is, however, one of the main barriers that is blocking their efforts. 
uh, generating a stronger commitment by young people and youth organizations uh, to get involved in anti-corruption efforts could help to uh, dismantle current uh, impediments and could be uh, a catalyst uh, for a change in society, uh, the economy and uh, politics. Before we conclude uh, our session, I would also like to share another video uh, with you, which is uh, showing a harm that corruption is having on an environmental. Uh, I am showing you this uh, because uh, 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 because young people uh, showed their uh, interest in environment and uh, climate justice as uh, one of the, the most important questions in eyes of young people. And we'll show you another perspective why uh, why we should combat corruption in our society. Uh, so I would like to share this with you it's a video prepared by uh, transparency transparency international corruption seriously harms the environment and is a major driver of the climate crisis it often remains hidden but most environmental crimes happen because corruption enables them whether it's politicians creating policies and laws under the influence of fossil fuel companies, forests and biodiversity lost to illegal logging and shell companies used to launder the proceeds, or failed and faulty infrastructure projects like coastal defenses or emergency shelters awarded to those with ties to the government, corruption takes many forms. Corruption also takes indigenous people's lands and when environmental defenders raise their voices, they are harassed and even killed. The climate crisis, like corruption, is a matter of life or death. Transparency International is working to make sure corruption does not destroy the planet. Join us! Yeah, and this is the video with uh, which I would like to conclude uh, today uh, today's uh, discussion about uh, corruption. Uh, it wasn't so much of a discussion, but uh, I am uh, really glad that uh, I have this opportunity to speak to you about uh, this important question, uh, not just for, for our countries that we live in, but uh, for a, a global system as a as a whole. I did not uh, collect or present you any exact uh, figures or data for, for the countries that uh, we are coming from, uh, because uh, I decided to, to present you the, the problem of corruption on the, on the global in, and in general uh, way. But at that point, I am inviting you to, to check uh, numbers and uh, data about uh, perception of corruption in, in your states and also combine these questions, uh, this data with, uh, with data about uh, social inequality, uh, uh, trust in democratic institutions, uh, uh, turnout on elections, uh, um, your GDP or uh, economy growth, and et cetera, et cetera, and uh, try to, to answer on, on the question if the corruption in, in our state are uh, present and what kind of uh, effects uh, is having on, on, on the society and on uh, our uh, lives and in the in the future or in the next uh, sessions of this uh, uh, conference i'm also inviting you to to discuss more uh, or at least start discussing uh, uh, different uh, ways and measures how to combat uh, uh, corruption and to find some solutions uh, and share uh, share it uh, uh, share them with with me. So uh, once again, I would like to, to thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, it was really a big pleasure for me to, to be with you uh, also in this uh, different uh, way of uh, communication. So I wish you a fruitful uh, conference in the in the next uh, uh, days and. Uh, I hope that we will uh, uh, see you in the in the future.
Bye.